Welcome to CivilNet. Our guest today is Karina Avedisyan, who is a doctoral student in Russian studies, yes, people still do Russian studies, at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. And she is studying social movements, civic movements, specifically in southern Russia, near the northern Caucasus. But in this particular case, we're going to be talking to Karina about a move afoot in Moscow, in the Duma specifically, uh, to make the work of civil society organizations just a little bit harder. And of course, we talk about all of this because we know very well that that which happens in Russia eventually finds its expression in Armenia, and this is something that is of concern. Karina, welcome to CivilNet. Thank you, Sophie. Um, you know, let's start with you trying to tell us whether the Cold War is over. This business of trying to uh, make the work of civil society organizations more complicated by saying that if they engage in political work, whatever that means, that they must register as foreign agents. That is just like spies, right? Absolutely. Um, what this bill means is, um, I mean, if it passes, uh, is a severe deterioration of the working climate for civil society organizations in Russia. The hope that it passes is great. huh? On the first reading, the votes were high. It requires, what, two more readings? It requires two more readings, and then um, another reading in the upper house, which is the Federation Council, and then um, it requires a signature by uh, President Putin. Um, some observers are um, predicting a quick passage. Some are saying as soon as a month, um, and um, it will be enacted by fall. So that will mean that somebody will have to decide whether a civil society organization is engaged in civic activity or political activity, right? Um, definitely. This law was passed by um, parliamentarians within the uh, ruling party, United Russia, and um, in many ways it is um, just a way to silence the anti-government um, activities that are um, starting from the civil society. Um, is this a new idea or is it in response to what's happening in Washington? No, this idea isn't new. Um, the Russian government, until now, was still able to and did uh, silence so-called undesirable NGOs. Um, so this is not a reaction to what's going on in Washington. But things are going on in Washington. What is the U.S. trying to do? Um, I don't think this is a reaction to what's going on in Washington. Um, I think this is more of a Russian government reaction to the growing anti-government dissent uh, in Russian society. Um, Russian, the Russian government until now was able to silence NGOs that it didn't uh, like, to put it mildly, um, before this. So, uh, uh, even during the first reading of this bill, there were dissenters outside protesting. Is that normal? Um, I think this would have been very um, exceptional before the growing uh, anti-government protests uh, in Russia. But I think now it's, it's, now it's quite normal. What other things are in play in Moscow to help Putin turn the clock back? The other things uh, in play in Moscow that might turn the clock back for Putin are um, increasing anger with the way Russian government authorities are seen to handle um, Emergencies, uh, problems. For, so, for example, the recent floodings in Krimsk are being reflected badly on Putin um, because people are increasingly starting to see um, the way of authorities, the, the lack of uh, response to such emergencies, as in the context of um, you know yet another here, here again, uh, the Russian authorities are um, forgetting us and don't care about us, um, and I think. In, in cases like this, Putin's position is, is being uh, weakened. So in other words, Russia's citizens are becoming more demanding? Abs I, absolutely. Russia, um, Russian citizens are increasingly starting to voice um, to government policies that with, but I think um, are now um, refusing to accept. 
Good. On that note, we'll end. Thank you, Karina Avedisian. Thank you. For talking to us about the recent effort in Moscow, probably one of a series that intends to limit the work of non-government organizations by branding them foreign agents if they receive any outside assistance. Uh, this issue interests us not just because Russia is a neighbor, but because in Armenia we tend to follow in Russia's steps, uh, unfortunately, way more often than we probably should. And so we'll be on top of this issue. Follow us on CivilNet. Mm -hmm.